Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Harvey's New Eyes. Last time, we met our protagonist, Lily, who's here at a convent, and, uh, looks like Edna's here, too. Alright. Anyway, we've been given chores. We need to, uh, get rid of the termites, uh, at the tree that's back over here, and also, we need to, uh, dig up... Uh, the uh, garden. So to deal with the garden, we need a shovel, but there's a shovel in the cellar, which is locked. And there might be a key in there, in the well. Also, um, uh, there's a bee's nest here, and we might be able to lure away the termites with some honey, like uh, Freeman was saying. I don't, I don't know where he's gone to. Anyway, let's see if we can't uh, get that honey. Oh, ah, what's going on? Oh no. Clumsy Lily had actually dropped the bee's nest into the well. The bees didn't like it too much either. Their buzzing sounded different than usual. No kidding. What are we going to do? Oh, by the way, I also fixed the uh, resolution, so uh, the screen should look a lot better than it did last time. I uh, completely neglected to take that into account on my first recording. Anyway, perhaps if we could fill the well even more, we can make it the beehive to float to the top. So let's uh, stick that in there, and we have to uh, turn the hose on. So let's go see if we can do that. So we just uh, turn this on. Too bad. The faucet was dry. Hmm, that's weird. What can we do about that? Why? Well, I haven't really checked out these things yet. The cellar door could only be opened with the correct key. That's in the well. So two birds with one stone, I guess. Uh, what's in here? This is the cellar. The shovel's all the way over there. A shovel? That's exactly what Lily needed. But she'd never get to it from here. Hmm. There's also an air hammer. Lily knew that this device was called an air hammer. But she didn't know why anyone would want to hammer air. That's a good question. A brush was lying on the shelf directly below the window. Uh, Lily's Lily kinda... just had to reach out. Lily's just kind of tiny enough that she could fit in, but then again, it'd probably be hard to get back out. Alright, so we at least got ourselves a brush. That doesn't solve our water problem. Lily would have also made a good bush. She could stand on the sidelines for hours without anyone noticing her. Ah, oh, poor Lily. Alright, if we move this aside... Lily was excited. Where could the hose lead to? What a surprise! The hose led to a thing. Looks like some sort of pump. I guess we need to uh, pump water into the hose so it can go out. Lily, turn that off immediately. Ah, but uh, did it work? Too bad. Hmm. What can we do? It didn't work at all, did it? No? Well, shoot. Oh, I hope you didn't hear that. I just dropped a can. Alright. Hmm. Anyway. I think I see what I have to do. Notice how the water was sucked through here and came up there. So if we attach this here, then turn on the pump. Lily, have you completely lost your mind? Turn that off immediately. But did I not tell you exactly what you should be doing? I just c c can't believe you keep finding new ways to disappoint me. Sorry. Lily didn't understand what she had done wrong. Well, uh, let's see what came of all this. Freeman was a little grumpy, sure, but he looked so funny with those red dots and yellow honey stains. There was no way this could last long. Aw, look at you. What happened to you, buddy? Um, ah, uh, Lily, thanks a lot for your great help. You really did a fantastic job. If I can ever help you... Uh... Oh, you want the cellar key. But of course not. What in the world are you 
kept thinking, you're the one who got me to go into the well. It's your fault that I fell in. But instead of helping me get out, you throw a beehive on my head and nearly drown me. Look at me. I'm wet, covered in bee stings, and smeared from head to toe with honey. I know everyone thinks you're sweet and harmless, but you're actually a walking disaster. You can definitely forget about the key. You keep away from me. Well, that wasn't very nice. Jeez. <clears throat> well, we need that key, but, uh... Well, we can't get it from him right now. Oh, well. Let's at least take care of the termites first. So, in our inventory, we have this brush. And we can lure them away from that tree back there with honey. So. If we go back... Oh, notice so how we're leaving like kind of a trail of honey. I guess that'll help to lead them away. They'll just follow the trail. And to wherever it takes them. Alright. The hey, termites responded very excitedly to the honey. To lure them away, Lily just had to find a good spot to spread it on. Okay, how about the compost? The compost bin was the ideal place to move the termites to. Lily started right away. So far, the plan had worked well. Maybe a little too well. The termites were now following Lily's spilled honey back into the courtyard. Ah! No! Don't! Get away! Ah! Strange sounds were drifting towards her from over there. It was probably the termites celebrating their new home. Ah, good for them. So... Let's go see about getting that key again. Uh, Freeman had now left for good, but at least the termites had found a new home on the bench. And as if that weren't reason enough to be happy, they had been joined by one of those funny gnomes that Lily sometimes saw around. Well, hello there. Oh, we have a little gnome here, but we can't look or interact with them or anything like that. But <laughs> it looked like the termites had found a new home. And one of the gnomes that Lily saw now and then was in the process of painting it in various colors. Too bad that Freeman was no longer here. He would probably have liked it too. Well, lucky for us, he dropped the key wherever he went. Freeman had left the cellar key for Lily. How nice of him. Ah. Bless him wherever, wherever he's off to. I'm sure we'll see him again. So, now that we have that... We can get into the cellar. Mother Superior had strictly forbidden the children from playing in the cellar. On the other hand, Lily had a task to finish. We certainly do. There we go. So let's take a look around. Digested grass, rat, pigeon. Lily assumed these cans were meant for the cafeteria. Oh my. Lily got along great with Doris, <laughs> the lunch lady. That's why she knew Doris would start throwing knives if anyone messed up her pantry. Oh, okay, let's uh, leave that alone, I guess. Lily knew that this device but she did All right. Oh, right, we got an air hammer. Shovel! That's exactly what Lily needed. A shovel! That's ig- Okay. And we got a shovel. What's in here? The stove was black and empty, just like the mirror that always appeared in Lily's dreams. Well, we'll leave that alone for now. No need to mess with that. So, uh... Oh, look at these happy little guys. Let's get to digging now. Here you go, Edna. Yay! You found the shovel! Oh, Lily, you're the best! Let's not waste any time and dig up the treasure! And Edna and Lily began digging out what they thought was a treasure chest. That's quite a treasure chest. It looks like it might have belonged to some space pirates once. Mm -hmm. So what? They were space pirates from World War II. Who cares? What's more important is that they left us their treasure. Come on, let's open it! I'm so excited! 
Ooh, what is this? Aerial A bomb? real treasure chest. It was hard to tell, but Lily was actually speechless. That's clever, leaving treasure inside of a bomb. I'm sure that's what this little hatch leads to. <sighs> that's not gonna work. Once again, more proof that the bad reputation raw violence has is completely undeserved. Here, we certainly won't get far without it. Raw violence, you say? How about the air hammer? Great! Now the device should have enough oomph to open the treasure chest. What's the matter? What are you waiting for? Don't you know how to use it? Uh-uh. Ah, don't worry. We'll find something else. Uh, I guess we'll just have to uh, put a bit more elbow grease in it with the shovel. Yippee! You did it! Hmm. And what's that supposed to be? Those space pirates must have led a pretty miserable life if this was their most precious treasure. Well, at least we have a fabulous chest, and I already have an idea what we can do with it. We'll bury our own treasure. Do you have anything on you? Hmm. Uh -uh. Some wool from embroidery class? Wow, that's perfect! Our friendship ribbon. The string that ties us both together, so to speak. Come on, put it in there. Now we just have to bury the chest again and... Lily! Where did the brat disappear to now? Lily! That's Mother Superior. What does she want now? We should check before she explodes. You have to be careful, you know? That took much too long for my liking. Is everyone finally here? Freeman is missing, Mother Superior. <laughs> Say nothing more! Your lack of discipline has reached a level that I can no longer tolerate. From now on, all games on the convent grounds are forbidden. And until further notice, there will be no more dessert, and bedtime will be moved up by an hour. And in case you're wondering, it is the bad behavior of one specific student that has led me to take these measures. In my helplessness, I even decided to call on an expert for help. He's a renowned psychologist who will restore discipline and order here in the convent. The examination will take place this evening. The doctor will drive the mischief out of you once and for all. And I can guarantee this much. It won't be a pleasant experience. A psychological examination? Oh, Lily. I'm sure this is all about me. I desperately need a plan. Meet me near the beds. I'll need your help. You have the rest of the day off to think about what you've done wrong. I'd better not hear that you've used the time to create more mischief. And Lily, I'm expecting you in my office now. I'm very disappointed in you, Lily. Can you ever do anything right? Ugh. Not another word. Your constant excuses just make me even angrier. And now just don't stand around like an idiot. Well, get a move on. Feed the cat. Can't you see how emaciated Lumpy has gotten again? Oh, stupid ch ch child! Aw, the cat's needed in his Lumpy. Hello. The cheerful flower seemed to like Lily. At least it bent forward just a touch when Lily came close. <laughs> oh, what a cutie. All right. Stop dawdling. Feed the cat. Oh, Is that on. really so hard to understand? Feed the cat. What's this painting? Woohoo. Well, that's kind of creepy. Anyway, cat there really here. was a can of cat food in the dumb waiter. There wasn't much for Lily to mess up this time. What could go wrong? All right. Life as Mother Superior's pet was probably wonderful and fulfilling. I bet. Here you go, Lumpy. Bad, Lily. Very, very bad. <laughs> you should really know that Lumpy doesn't eat regular cat food. Um. Hmm. But you've disappointed me for the last time. Here's the recipe for the right cat food. 
Bring it to Doris, the lunch lady. It contains exact instructions for preparing Lumpy's food. Doris can also find my lunch order for today on there too. Do you understand? Uh-huh. And now, get out. I have to prepare for Dr. Marcel's arrival. I'm hoping that his new method of correcting character flaws will save me this kind of trouble in the future. Why are there people like this? There are people who actually live their life with this kind of attitude all the time. And they're always miserable. Lily felt miserable. Exactly. Maybe Mother Superior was right. And this character correction would make everything better. The thought made Lily shudder. She had heard stories about Dr. Marcel. Dreadful stories. She should tell Edna the news. Dr. Marcel, you say? This confirms my worst suspicions. The doctor and I still have an old score to settle. I'm sure he's coming because of me. <sighs> Lily, I can't stay here any longer. I'm going to leave the convent and go into hiding for a while. There's just one catch. That guy Garrett, who's constantly lurking around, I think he's spying on us for Mother Superior. So long as he keeps poking his nose into everything, I can't move freely. Do you think you can find a way to keep him off me for a while? Uh-huh. Oh, Lily. You're such a gem. What would I do without you? Okay, so yeah, Dr. Marcel. The uh, guy from the last game. Interesting. So what happened? Remember, there are two endings to the last game, so which one was canonical? One where Edna just kind of gives up and is taken back to be rehabilitated. The other one where Edna pushes Dr. Marcel down the stairs. Hmm. Either way, Dr. Marcel is apparently still alive. Lily didn't have any talent. Mother Superior only allowed her to embroider crosses and lines. But Lily could barely manage even those and often received a scolding. Of course she did. Lily didn't know what to do with all these brand new marbles. Up until then, she had always played marbles with severed dolls' heads. At least they had talked to her while she played. Well, that's good. Uh, I sometimes don't even have responses to some of these. Lily had never seen Edna so worried. Not even the night that she set fire to the vestry. Hmm. And? Are you making progress? Yeah. Uh, cool. So you've been working on your imitating animal voices number. You can tell me about it later, okay? Hmm. First, we have to get rid of Garrett. I'm sure he's spying for Mother Superior. I'm sorry that I can't help you, but I can't risk Dr. Marcel finding me. You know what they say about him. It's all true. Except the story with the orangutan. I made that one up. <laughs> Not so loud. Dr. Marcel's ears are everywhere. If you listen closely, you can even hear the wind blowing in his ear hairs. That guy is no joke. But you know the rumors, so watch out for him. He is evil. Evil. <laughs> All right. All right, so let's just grab these marbles and uh, see what's going on. Hello? Lily had always thought Shy was very pretty, much prettier than herself. But cutting off a girl's hair while she was sleeping so that you could use it to make yourself a wig just wasn't right. That's why Lily returned each night to her bunk without actually doing anything. Aw, oh, but Shy has plenty of hair to spare. Suka was the most popular girl at the convent school. Lily would have stopped at nothing to gain her respect. But since Suka wasn't looking anyway, Lily refrained at the last moment. All right, well, let's see what they're up to. <laughs> Shibuya power! Shibuya power! Oh. Volcano Pananoka! Shiny rainbow Miyasake! Shing! Shing! And we have a couple of weeaboos here. Girl, you're so clueless about trends. Just <laughs> look at how you dress. Don't you know that Shibuya and only Shibuya is hot right now? Where's your glitter? Where are your Japanese accessories? Miyoroshi Sparkle! Miyoroshi Sparkle! Shing! Shing! Uh, huh? Oh, man. You're really out of it, Lily. Oh. 
Oh. Why are you gawking at my hairdo? Don't tell me you've got your eye on my original Marushu Naoki hairpin. Can you believe it, Shy? Don't believe. Just know. The warriors of light see with the power of love. Just who does she think she is? Hiroyoshi Super Frog's arch enemy Soki Nuroshi Maya Yoki Hagatsu? Down with the dark forces! Trust in the elf magic of the glitter dust. Exactly. Everyone knows that a real Shibuya girl will only part with her hairpin if it's a real emergency. And only if facing death. Yoroshi Sparkle. Mystical spirit of the wolf. Mystical spirit of the wolf. Kamanukri. Shing. And anyway, what even makes you think we'll let you have any of our personal things? You haven't launched any radical paramilitary campaigns or done anything to help destroy the state. We can't let the dark forces win! Plus, you've never helped us destroy the school. Does being warriors of the light really mean we have to destroy the school? It seems a little too hardcore to me. But Riot Girl does it too! On page 31 in volume 453, she puts one of Naga Yuzu's detonators in the teacher's lounge when the dark forces kidnap Musushi Rainbow. Shibuya is cool! Miyamushi Sparkle! Detonators. Didn't we see one of those earlier? Anyway, how did these girls in a really short convent get access to uh, manga? Hmm. I already told you, you're not getting my hairpin. Only a true warrior of the light is worthy of it. Powers of the light, call upon the moon spirits. And until you start helping us fight the dark forces with a cool paramilitary campaign, don't even think of asking for our help. Miyoroshi Sparkle! Miyoroshi Sparkle! Ah, oh, that's too bad. But her hairpin is so cool. Can we get a hold of it? Oh, and can we also check out Dr. Marcel and also this, uh, Garrett guy? Was that his name? I forget. Anyway, let's see what we can do next time on Let's Play Harvey's New Eyes. Thank you for watching and have a good day.